In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use one of the specialist layout tools for rotary applications. We're going to show you how to use the fluting layout gadget tool to automatically create the vectors that will then be machined to produce the fluted column that you can see on the screen. So this represents where we're going, but let's have a look at creating a new file. So first we're going to come up to File and Close. And we'll close down our file and we'll go to Create a New File. So first we're presented with our job setup sheet. So we're gonna set up our job here. So we want a rotary uh, job type. We want the length to be 12 inches, the diameter three inches, and our units are of course inches. My Z0 position will be the cylinder axis. Now this is because we don't know the exact circumference of the cylinder in this scenario. Obviously this may change depending on your machine and your setup, but this scenario I'm gonna use the cylinder axis. My XY dating position is in the bottom left-hand corner, and I'm gonna use the orientation of the X axis, which means I'll be cutting along the axis x-axis and wrapping the y-axis for this particular rotary job. I'm also going to make sure that my resolution is set to the highest possible here which is very high and my material settings is Canadian maple for the material. So let's go ahead and click OK and get into our design. So first we're going to need some vectors to actually work with so we can start creating our fluid column but as you can see we don't have any at the moment. So that's because we're going to use a gadget, which is a very powerful tool that, in fact, allows us to create vectors in a much easier way. So for those of you who have VCarve Pro and Aspire, you'll have access to this option here for gadgets. So let's go ahead and look at the gadget we need to use today for underwrapping, which is the fluting layout. Okay, so with our form now open, you can see there's a very brief explanation of the fluting gadget, and you can see that we can set the number of flutes that we have. So over here, I'm going to set it to six, and then we can... Uh, set the offset from the start of the worksheet. So for example, if you wanted to have a flute that started one inch from the edge of the worksheet, you could put in one here like I have here, and then you can also do the same for the end. So you can have it so that it's one inch from the end. You also have some options up here to create codes. Now this would be where you can add some codes into your flutes, and these would intersect and wrap around your worksheet so where the ends would actually meet so this will go from top to bottom or bottom to top and wrap around to create that cove in this particular case and at the bottom of the form here you can see that you have your cylinder length with a diagram of 12 inches and your diameter of three inches which is what we set up in the job setup form so let's have a look at what vectors are created when we click ok so let's switch over to the 3d view and have a look at our vectors and you can see here our vectors have been produced for our flutes and if I click on these, these are our codes. Now, a key thing to remember here uh, as a benefit over drawing these manually, which you could of course do, is that the fluting gadget has taken into account that this is a wrapped rotary job. So what it's done is it's created the vectors in such a way that you see at the top here and the bottom, you effectively got half a flute. So in the middle, you've got all of your full flutes, and then at the edges you've got half and half. And that, that's because the software knows, and the gadget knows, that you're gonna wrap this job. And so when the ends meet, they will make a smooth, full flute. So it takes that into account for you. So that makes uh, your life a lot easier in terms of you don't have to manually draw it and figure out uh, the accuracy and where each vector needs to be placed because the gadget will do that for you. And of course now we have our coves at the ends here and you'll notice they are spaced one inch from the edge as we specified in the form so one inch from the start and one inch from the end now before we go any further we should also have a look at our layers tab so if we pop up to the top here you'll notice we've got multiple layers we should cover this because this is important to note that they're on each of their own separate layers so you notice we have a zero plane uh, original layer a bounding box layer which in this kind of scenario we don't need to use but you'll notice the fluting vectors if i just highlight them for a moment if I turn them off, they are on their own separate layer and save them for the cove. If I select them and I turn them off, you notice they are on their own layer as well. Now with that covered, we can take a look at doing some toolpathing. So we need to pop up to the top left here and click on this icon to go over to the toolpath commands menu. Now we're going to go over to the top right here and make sure our material setup is correct. So let's click on set. And you'll notice a lot of these parameters are pulled from the job setup screen that we saw earlier. So our diameter is, of course, 3 inches that we set earlier. X, Y, date in bottom left. Z, 0 set off the center of the cylinder. We don't need to worry about model position in the material because we're not using a model in this scenario. Uh, Z, 1 and Z, 2 clearance I've set 
for settings that are appropriate for my machine. So please double check this for your particular setup and make sure that these values are set to a safe value for your particular setup. And of course, make sure the same goes for the Z gap above material as well. So with that all set and I'm happy with my settings, I can click OK and we can have a look at creating our toolpath. So let's select our vector. So if we click on the worksheet and click Control A, they'll highlight all of our vectors. You can see the highlighted in the pink solid lines here. And in this scenario, we're going to use a profile toolpath. OK, so let's look at our profile setting. So I want to set the depth to 0.2 inches. And I've selected a ball nose tool here because I want to really get a lovely effect for my flutes and a ball nose will achieve that. Now, crucially, I've also set my machine up to be the desktop rotary along X because that is the orientation in which I am cutting my rotary job. And I have tools specified for this particular machine. And I highly recommend you watch the machine configuration guide on how to set up your machine so you can populate the correct post processor for the type of job you're doing. For in this case, we are doing a rotary job, so I need a rotary post processor as well as setting up my rotary machine in the software. Make sure your settings are safe and appropriate for your machine. In this case, I'm happy with my settings that I've got here because I've tested these before. So I can hit select and I'm going to be machining on the vectors. Don't need to do a separate last pass or adding tabs to this one for a rotary job. Don't need to worry about ramps, leaves, or anything like that. So we can go ahead and change the name here to Profile Flutes. And let's hit Calculate. Now you notice currently it's at a flat job because I haven't clicked this button up here to turn it into a rotary wrapped view. So let's have a look at what happens when I click this button. You'll notice now my worksheet has been wrapped around into the cylinder. If I right click and drag, you can see I can roll around the cylinder to look at the toolpath. And you can see the blue lines that represent where the tool is going to cut. Now, if I just tar my views, you can see the toolpath cutting directions here. And if I go ahead and preview this toolpath, so I've got it selected. I'm going to click Preview Selected Toolpath. You'll notice there that it first unwrapped that job, so it unwrapped it, cut it, and then wrapped it again. So as I spoke about earlier in the job setup, because we're cutting along X but wrapping Y, what the job is doing is it's taking the Y axis and effectively wrapping it to the A axis in this case. Uh, so it's wrapping the Y axis to create this wrapped rotary job. So it's running a standard three axis toolpath, but then wrapping it around to achieve this toolpath. So it's important to note that this is a visual representation of your job until you're ready to go post it out and save out your toolpath to go to your machine because your post processor will wrap the axis that needs wrapping. In this case, that'll be the Y axis to the A axis, and that will effectively give you your rotary cut. And to help you visualize this a bit further, I can click the option here to unwrap this view and you can see now that as a flat job you can see how it's done it so it's just cut it as a three axis job effectively and then it just simply wraps it but with our preview done and we're happy with how it looks we can go and save our toolpath now so we can close out of this menu and we can save our toolpath so let's go up to the save toolpath icon and let's click into that and make sure we've got our toolpath checked and we're going to choose the selected toolpath option Make sure we've got our rotary machine set up. So of course, if you need to, do consult the machine configuration guide on how to set up your machine, uh, because that's how you'll populate the correct post processor for yourself in this case. Mine is the G-code wrap Y2A post, because I'm wrapping the Y axis to the A axis in this scenario, because I'm cutting a long X, as we discussed earlier in the job setup menu. And this will help produce the G-code that I can then send to my machine to start cutting the design. So let's click Save Toolpaths. I'm saving it in the folder location I've created. And I'm going to call this one Profile Fru Flute, so it's nice and obvious as to what this toolpath is. And click Save. And that is our G-code ready for our machine to cut. And of course, you can also save this file. So if you want to save a file, you can just go up to File. And we can click Save As. And I'm going to give this one the name Creating a Fluid Column. Click Save. And that CRV file now is ready for me to use or edit 
later on if I need to. And finally, let's maximize our 3D view again. Let's look at our finished product. You can see our wonderful looking fluted rotary column. And we made that very quickly. You can see how powerful the gadgets are in VCarve Pro and Aspire. So please do have a try this yourself. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial on how to create a fluted column.